some will probably recollect that moment in history in November 2020 as a career suicide for me for committing uh, something this early for the National Oil Company. Uh, let me stress the point um, that under PDA, the Petroleum Development Act 1974, which brought Petronas into being, Petronas is charged with the duty of trust and the obligation to monetize and maximize the value of hydrocarbons of Malaysia. That will still remain uh, our core calling. But as the country's national oil company, we also cannot forget that we have a commercial obligation to create value for the shareholders beyond uh, what we perceive to be our monetizable assets today. Um, when I assumed the role, uh, the Prime Minister at that time had already recognized that there was a need to diversify uh, into new spaces. As, as, it, as we would, came to sharp focus, the volatility brought about by the pandemic really brought into question uh, the entire energy supply chain. Um, and so far as a move away from <coughs> oil and gas, uh, I've gone on record many, many times. I do believe that while we strive for a decarbonized future, it is not a future completely absent of uh, hydrocarbons. Um, <clears throat> it is now a reflection that we have adopted a statement of purpose and embracing it. Uh, we want to become a, a progressive energy and solutions partner, enriching lives for a sustainable future. Curiously absent is the term oil and gas, but we recognize that duty is still there. Um, but as we pursue this, we know that sustainability is no longer just a luxury or a badge to differentiate. Indeed, in this uh, upcoming future, it is a license to operate. Petronas is not starting from zero in this respect. Um, when I brought you on board, uh, Charlotte, I think uh, you, you do realize there were building blocks already uh, in place as early as 2001, before the term ESG became a little bit more ubiquitous. We already had a corporate sustainability framework. In 2010, we formed our earliest sustainability councils to deliberate this issue. Uh, we made carbon commitments in 2012 um, and only recently in 2020 that I actually brought, bring this to sharp focus with uh, the November 2020 declaration to move to net zero. Uh, this is now translated to some real near term outcomes, which we hope to be measurable, uh, capping our GHG emissions to 49.5 million tons of CO2 by 2024, uh, getting to roughly three gigawatts of renewables capacity something I hope I can explore with uh, greater pace and urgency with uh, my learned colleague on the screen here. We continue to also fulfill our duty to society by uh, supporting education efforts. We hope to have 24,000 education beneficiaries within this uh, planning cycle. So with regards to uh, starting off on this journey, while we still have the oil and gas at the core, the step outs, the necessary step outs to remain, uh, remain sustainable the step outs into renewables, uh, pursuing carbon capture and storage technology, making our forays into hydrogen, solar and wind, as rightly alluded to by uh, the, right Honourable, uh, the Right Honourable Minister, I think uh, we, we, we do have this duty as a corporation to pursue. Uh, as a state-owned enterprise or as an OE, Pertamina is an integrated of uh, government energy transition journey. Our energy portfolio is aligned with the energy mix targeting set out by our National Energy General Plan, as well as recently formulated by National Energy Grant Strategy, when all of the energy supply is still fossil fuels. Until 2040, the fossil fuel is still dominating our energy mix. Yeah, and then the growth of the demand until 2040 is still around 2.1 percent, and, and uh, possibly. Uh, derived from the uh, fossil fuels. But the, the, the growth of energy, the new energy or energy will be more, will grow more aggressively. Pertamina builds an integrated oil and gas supply chain to supply domestic demand and actively build an energy portfolio using domestic resources. In our steady adapt, adaption, sorry, adaptation to the transition, we will develop a greener energy mix by the end of this decade, compared to the last year. One is reducing the refined products and LPG share from 
86% to 64%. Secondly, increasing the share of the gas from 13 to 19%, and increasing the share of NRE from 1% to 17%. But we also is to some extent reflective of um, of what we may see coming forward in the years to come. I think we cannot take the view that these spikes will be will not be seen as we continue uh, the green transition. I think we have to expect some spikes to come from now and then, from uh, from uh, between uh, now and then. The question is, what do we do about this? Now that's where I think there is a real issue that governments have to have to take on board with respect to the population. When populations see a spike in uh, such oil prices, then what will their position be on the green transition and therefore the climate change agenda of governments? I think that's a big issue because I think we're beginning to see some parts of that happening already in uh, places in Europe and so on. Uh, and I think in countries like China, which are so reliant on uh, on on energy and in particular uh, on coal and gas for their own industrialization, they have to think quite carefully about how to manage this transition more effectively going forward if they're going to see uh, re uh, a repeat of what they've been facing in the last couple of months uh, and where they've now had to ramp up coal production, for example, which will of course set them further behind in their carbon goals, which are already very difficult to reach. So if I look at that, then you know, what is it that we need to see in order to get a, a better equilibrium down the road with regard to energy prices versus the ability to invest in the energy transition? We've got to go to, uh, you know, we have to look at technology and innovation. This is a very relevant issue. I mean, you look at solar, for example. Mal Malaysia is a big uh, player in production of solar panels, one of the biggest in the world. Uh, but uh, the consumption of solar energy in this country is small. I know Petronas has gone in, into this in a fairly big way, and going forward, I'm sure Petronas will put more money in, in the solar sector. So this is an area where, through technology innovation, uh, we've been able to reduce cost of production. So that, that therein, I think, lies uh, the solution. There's going to be bumps along this journey, and the, the current uh, issues in Europe, India, and China, of course, you know, is a clear example of, of a, of a bump, which will uh, hopefully not derail, hopefully it's a temporary phenomenon, uh, but certainly these are some challenges. So I think the answer lies in in, in innovation and technology. Uh, Petronas has done a lot of work in this, and of course Singapore is also investing a lot of money in that phenomenon as, as well. Uh, you look at how digitalization has, has transformed uh, the global economy, you know, e what is done to e-commerce, for example, this is one instance, and of course in oil and gas as well. There's a lot of digitalization going on. So I think the answer to some of this challenge, not, not, not a complete answer, of course. I think we've got to uh, do more, spend more money on research and development. Innovation is key, bring down the costs uh, of production. Uh, and uh, if that's done, then it will be, it become more acceptable to society. Uh, as uh, uh, Dylan pointed out, I mean, of course, it's very expensive uh, to run on, 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 on green, totally green uh, fuel to, you know, to, 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 uh, to get jets flying uh, in the air. Uh, we have, uh, well, going forward, there will be green hydrogen. Uh, that's probably some way away. Uh, but uh, looking at hydrogen, for example, uh, they've been telling us that uh, there's a lot of uh, research going on. And hopefully that's another source of, of, of renewable energy. Uh, so this, this is, uh, I think, in my view, we have companies who have to spend more on research and development to bring the cost of production. That's one way out of addressing this this bumpy journey uh, towards, uh, you know, uh, net zero emission. Thank you, Charlotte.